As the Gasm of Ends of Eternity is a very acclaimed novel published in 1955, and it received this particular Hungarian 1976 television adaptation. Some very interesting sets, to be sure. They even use balloons as a backdrop at one point. It's quite fascinating. Mostly it's one of these pictures where you have to be fascinated in the production values that you were displaying in the screen caps, and you have to be interested in a story that is told through functional expository dialogue, science fiction dialogue. It is very heady, and you are essentially reading a text as you are trying to, well, you, you get the grasp of the, the set and what they're attempting to, to go for aesthetically within the shot, and then you focus upon the dialogue, reading the subtitles, unless one happens to know Hungarian. But it's pretty fun. At only 80 minutes, it doesn't take up too much of one's time. And for those who aren't aware, I'm going to read out the premise of Asimov's End of Eternity. It's a novel which is both a mystery and a thriller, as well as a science fiction text. It focuses on time travel and social engineering. The plot focuses on a causal loop, a temporal paradox in which events and their causes form a loop. Members of a time-changing organization known as Eternity seek to ensure the conditions that lead to its founding occur. The protagonist, Harlan, is in a situation where he must decide whether he wants the circle to close or prevent the existence of Eternity in the first place. End of Eternity is also known for being vaguely related to Asimov's more well-known, very well-known Foundation series. It is said that the events at the end of End of Eternity lead to the timeline where the Foundation stories take place. Let's read about the origins of Asimov's End of Eternity text. In December of 1953, Asimov was thumbing through a copy of the 28th of March 1932 issue of Time and noticed what looked at first glance like a drawing of the mushroom cloud of a nuclear explosion. A closer look showed him that the drawing was actually a geyser of the old faithful. However, he began pondering the question of what the implications would be if there had been a drawing of a mushroom cloud in a magazine from 1932, and he eventually came up with the plot of a time travel story. He began the story at the end of eternity on the 7th of December 1953, and he finished it on the 6th of February 1954, when it was 25,000 words long. Asimov submitted the story to Galaxy Science Fiction, and within days, he received a call from Galaxy editor Horace L. Gold that rejected the story. Asimov decided to turn the story into a novel, and on March 17th, he left it with Walter I. Bradbury, the science fiction editor at Doubleday, to get his opinion. Bradbury was receptive, and by April 7th, Asimov had been informed that a contract for the novel was in the works. Asimov began expanding the story and eventually delivered the novel version to Bradbury on December 13th. Doubleday accepted the novel, which was published in August 1955. The novel reflects the state of scientific knowledge of its time, some of which has been superseded. For instance, the power source for the time travellers is referred to as Nova Sol, and a link to the far future taps the energy of the exploding sun. Scientists now know that the sun is far too small to explode. As may be seen below, the novel may also be counted as the prequel to the Empire series of novels, which form part of the Foundation series. Asimov had already included a kind of time travel in his 1950 novel Pebble in the Sky, but it was a one-way trip. The original End of Eternity appeared in 1986 in a collection called The Alternate Asimovs. If you're so inclined, give this a whirl.